I guess just to jump right in, um, how have you been doing so far with everything going on? <laughs> uh, no, I've been, I've been doing pretty good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I have access to a gym right now. Um, you know, I'm like a lot of guys, but it's definitely, um, uh, it's definitely a different all season that we, we've ever had. You know, obviously right now, normally we'd all be with our respective teams, but I, as you know, you know, all, all activity, <clears throat> All activities, you know, everything's been suspended and stuff. So, you know, kind of just going, taking this thing day by day and kind of just waiting to hear what's next and when we'll be back and all, all those kinds of things. So, Yeah, I really wanted to try to figure out the mindset of a professional football player right now. Obviously, dealing with problems, um, everyone's dealing with work, but certainly on a different level. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to stay in shape. Uh, you know, it's definitely going to be a big test. For a lot of guys, you know, even the all season can be tough. You know, you go three, four months where you have to go work out on your own and stay stay on top of your game and stay in tip top shape. Well, I, I mean, normally by now, by the time we get back to our teams, you know, the teams kind of take over that development and take over all that training. Now you're gonna, you know, be asking guys to continue to stay disciplined in their training and stay disciplined in everything they're doing for, you know, an even lo an even longer period of time. You know, which is tough to do. So. Uh, I, I think this is going to be a big test, uh, you know, for a lot of guys. But you know, you got to stay, got to keep training, got to keep on on a, on a schedule, and, and, and just continue to get better every day until you know we're back, whenever that is, even if that's not until training camp. So, how has it been, you know, staying in contact with your coaches and players? Um, well, you know, we we we've, we've talked to our coaches kind of here and there in terms of you know, finding out when we're going to be back and stuff. You know, we have virtual meetings starting, I think, this Monday. It's going to be our first kind of round of virtual meetings on, like, Zoom and stuff like that where we'll really be able to um, have contact with our coaches and talk, you know, football or whatever. So, um, but it, it's going to be interesting, you know. <laughs> it's definitely going to be different being on Zoom and, and not being in the room with all the guys at the same time and all learning. Um, it, it's, it's definitely going to be different. And obviously, um, a player like you who loves football, how does it feel having to, you know, you not know, you don't know the next time you're going to touch the field. Yeah, uh, it's tough. Um, it's tough, but I mean, you just got to stay on yourself. You got to stay on top of your fundamentals. You know, and the tough thing about right now is, you know, not everybody has access to maybe all the equipment and you know everything you may need in order to duplicate those drills or duplicate, you know. But you just got to find ways. You got to get do your best to uh, try to. Um, try to integrate all your position drills and, and position work into what you're doing each day uh, so it's definitely going to be a it'll be a test for a lot of guys for sure we talked a lot about how the off season's getting kind of changed up and week one is set to start on september 10th as of today april 24th but however we don't know when that kickoff is really going to begin as a player how would it feel if the league date was pushed back or the season was even canceled man uh <laughs> I'm a big believer in speaking things into existence, so I don't even want to speak that uh, that uh, 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 into happening. To be honest, um, I mean, I really hope it doesn't. I, I think at the at the very least, you know, we play with maybe no fans. I think, you know, I know you've heard probably. I think the NBA and maybe some other sports leagues are thinking about that. You know, playing games without fans and stuff. And I think most likely that'll probably be the smartest thing to do in the beginning, depending on how. Corona lasts through the, through the summer, if it lasts through the summer. Um, but, yeah, that would be that would be a shame. I mean, you got to think about it. I've been playing football starting in September since, what, my fifth grade? <laughs> so it'll be the first year in, in so long where it didn't start in September if that does happen. So it would be, it would be devastating for sure. Yeah, that was actually going to be my uh, next question. There's so many families and so many other people going through things way, way worse than that. So, you know, we got always got to keep that in mind. <laughs> Just keep praying for everybody and keep hoping everybody's, you know, healthy and, and isn't affected, affected in, the, in the greatest way like some families have been. Yeah, I was actually going to ask about, um, from a player's perspective, how do you feel about playing in the stadiums with no fans? Um, it would definitely be weird, no doubt about it. But I think as a player, we've all been to stadiums where, like, it wasn't hype or, you know, there weren't that many fans or whatever. I think I, mean, I think we play, we all play the game, you know, for the love of the game. And just to be able to play in this league and play against the very best, I mean, that's enough in terms of motivation and all those kinds of things for me. I mean, the fans are, are that's cool and stuff, but 
man, I, I'm just, I just get excited every day to know that I get to go up against the best, you know? Yeah, and actually, uh, shifting gears over to the Detroit Lions, you know, last year you signed on to the practice squad and you quickly worked your way up to the active roster. Um, what are your expectations heading into the 2020 season? Um, you know, I'm just getting better every every single day and just trying to continue to expand my role in, in, in as many ways as possible, whether that's on, you know, special teams, defense, or, you know, even on offense. I know you're seeing, you know, late in the, late in the year, I was able to get a couple reps in at, at fullback on offense, so... I mean, I'm just trying to be a do-it-all guy, just trying to go in, do my part, and, and, and just be one of the uh, the leaders on the team, Be a, try to be a leader in the linebacker room. Yeah, I, I remember watching you get those fullback reps, and I went wild because um, when I was a freshman in high school, you were a senior in high school, and I was commentating the football games. So I, I really no, I saw how <laughs> yeah, uh, so I really saw how lethal uh, you were running people over. <laughs> wow, that's really funny, small world. I had no idea. Yeah, it was um, it was a very small world. I actually wanted to ask a little bit more about your time as a, a high school running back. Uh, were there any yeah. running backs in the league that you looked up to, and you're now trying to bring down to the ground? Um, you said any any running backs right now that are in the league that I that I like used to look up to, or just any while I was in high school, or what? Uh, yeah, I think um, any in high school, any now. Um, I'm trying to think. There's probably one running back that I always kind of like idolized, kind of just growing up in general. Was Eric Dickerson. I always thought he was like so live, um, you know, just the way he played. And I, I always thought, you know, one of Eric Dickerson's like biggest, I guess, like things they would say against him was just like how high he ran, I guess. Mm-hmm. And like I used to run really high in high school, and that was kind of one of the things they used to say about me. And I always see in my head be like, well, I'm gonna be just like Eric Dickerson. <laughs> so that's funny. It didn't end up. Didn't end up uh, staying as a running back, but I'm still trying to do my thing. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was funny. I actually, um, when I was cleaning up my room the other day, I found a, a my old high school broadcasting notebook, and I had written down your senior year. You got tackled behind the line of scrimmage only once. <laughs> wow, are you for real? Yeah, it, Jason. The things you did as a running back were just—it it was insane to watch. <laughs> Damn, that's actually kind of crazy. I didn't even know that. <laughs> and um, if I'm not mistaken, when uh when you were a senior, I believe you had um you were originally committed to Syracuse, and then Penn State came in a little bit later with their offer. If I'm not mistaken. Right, right. Yep, yep. How did it feel, you know, having Penn State, you know, being touted as a linebacker? You, you know, offer you to the spot, and you went on to have a really successful career at Penn State as well. Yeah, obviously, you know, when you're a guy that's going into college as a linebacker and you get an uh, um, a offer, a scholarship from a place like Penn State, you know, linebacker you, um, clearly, you know, it means a lot. Clearly, it's, it's it holds a whole lot of weight. You know, you want to go there. You want to, you know, continue that legacy. You know, it's a place that puts linebackers in the league and, you know, is known for that. And obviously... You know, as a young player, you know, going to the NFL, you know, that's that's kind of all of our dreams. You know, it's just separate thought for all of us. So all those things were, were big, big factors as to why I chose Penn State, in addition to, you know, it being a great academic school. And it also, uh, you know, from an athletic standpoint, you know, playing teams like the Ohio State, the Michigans, playing on the big stage, playing in front of 107,000. I mean, I went my senior year, I went to um, – that quadruple overtime win against Michigan, and I was a part of that. And seeing, you know, seeing the fans rush the field, that was the first time I'd ever been to, like, a sporting event where something like that happened, and it was just, it was insane. I mean, after that, there was just no question as to where I was going. I think that the following Wednesday after that game, I think I decommitted from Syracuse and committed to Penn State. <sighs> that is. And that's history. <laughs> yeah. And your um your senior year at Penn State, Penn State really put a lot of shock into uh, people. How was it being a part of that team and really getting Penn State football back on the map? Yeah, I mean to this day, I think it's one of the one of my proudest memories. You know that 2016 season, just in general, not even just the Ohio State win or the you know the Big Ten championships, obviously were like the big moments for just that, you know, entire season in general, just how data we were, you know, uh, just the overall work that we put in going into that year and, and how much fans had labeled us as a team that was just dead and was never going to come back from the sanctions and all that stuff. And, 
I mean, there's just a culmination of so many things that make that year so special. But, you know, to put Penn State back where they belong, to finish, you know, I fin- think we finished fifth, My f- to finish number five, you know, my junior and senior year. And we got screwed out of the playoffs this <laughs> year. But, um, <laughs> I, I couldn't but, agree more. You know, <laughs> but to be able to, you know, to be able to go and do that uh, and, and bring that place back to its relevance, back to where it's supposed to be, and, and, and to see it continue down, to see us, as a team that finishes top 10 in and out every single year, I mean, it's, it's, it's something to be very proud of. So it's definitely not something I take for granted at all. And during that 2016 year, I don't think any win was bigger than the Ohio State one where you had the game-clinching sack against JT Barrett. What was your mindset on that play? Because as you brought him down, the victory was secured right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it was... I mean, I still remember, like, uh, making the sack because... And, and holding my thumb up because I, I was playing in a club or whatever, and I, I still, <laughs> it's funny you asked me about that play because I, I actually just did an interview the other day where they like played me that clip, <laughs> and you could just see this like crazy, crazy look in my eyes like after I made that sack. Uh, but I mean, we were just, we just wanted to claim the throne, you know. We were tired of, uh, of coming close to, to anybody or you know of moral victories. It was just, it was our time, and I still remember after that sack and knowing like we really like that's it we've really done it like we're really about to win and it kind of just really all sunk in after that play and obviously I think we got another sack of the next play on like a long force and 20 or something like that to like truly you know seal the game we got our offense back for them to take the knee but I mean that was just one of the greatest moments that was the second time I'd ever been a part uh, of a sporting event where all the fans rush the stadium and to have such a actual part in in the win you know um and not being a spectator made it so much sweeter yeah and um so shifting gears a little bit um you joined the raiders via an undrafted um free agent which i was a shock after your career at penn state and i remember seeing mock drafts with you going as high as the fourth round um with the nfl draft this weekend i just wanted to ask if uh, that added an extra chip on your shoulder yeah, no doubt about it. You know, when I came into the league, you know, as an undrafted guy, you know, I came in just really hungry. Um, came in trying to make sure, you know, I showed people that I belonged and I was supposed to be here. And, you know, going undrafted can be something that can either you can allow it to eat away at you and allow it to maybe reduce your confidence in yourself or it's something that you can use as fuel as fuel and something that you can use as a chip on your shoulder and that's what I did you know for me it was just about proving everybody wrong you know I just came in on some you know nobody's your friend nobody believes you belong here so you need to go show them each and every single day and I you know as an undrafted guy you get less opportunities so I knew I had to make the most out of the ones that I got you know and I was able to do that yeah, and uh, with the Raiders, you were able to start three games. How was it, you know, getting your first ever NFL career start? Yeah, I mean, it, it was crazy. I, you know, my rookie year was a bit of a roller coaster, obviously, from from going undrafted to, you know, being on practice squad to my first game on the active roster, I end up starting on defense. So, <laughs> I mean, I really went from the all the way from the bottom to the top, really, in a matter of some weeks, you know. Um, so that was crazy just in general, but also, obviously I was really thankful, you know, to be able to have the trust of my teammates and my coaches to be able to go out there and start a few games and, and get some run. Um, so, um, I think that was huge just getting that experience my rookie year because it gave me a lot of confidence going into year two. Yeah, and it, in the opportunity, you really did perform well. You ranked 24th out of, um, 124 20, uh, qualified linebackers, uh, that year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's I, kind of just been me. I just I make the most of what I get, you know. Um, but I think those stats and those things that came out from PPF or whatever you call them and all that stuff is probably another reason why I was able to get an opportunity as quickly as I did when, when the Raiders released me. So, you know, thankful for that. Yeah, and um, looking at your time with the Raiders, um, I really want to ask, what is it like being coached by John Gruden, one of the most respected and exuberant coaches in the NFL history? Oh man, I, I absolutely love Coach Bruder, man. He uh, <laughs> he's a character, as, as most people know. But I mean, there isn't a guy who, who loves football more than that dude. I mean, he's a he's a dude who could just get to the get to the facility at four a.m. and be watching film till midnight and, and sleep there and wake up the next day. I mean, the dude, uh, it, it's it's amazing to be able to play for a coach 
where football is the reason why they tick. I mean, and that's how Coach Gruder is. I mean, you could tell when he wakes up in the morning, when he walks up and in walks into the building, you could tell that football is what makes him tick. He, that, that's what makes him go every single day. So he's the kind of coach that really brings it out of you and brings the excitement and, and what you need going into practice each and every day. And it was your rookie year, I believe, Hard Knocks was with the Raiders. How was it working with Hard Knocks uh, during training camp and off season? Yeah, yeah, no, that was my second year, um, but it was uh, it was interesting. Um, obviously, the madness and the craziness of cameras everywhere, and you know, um, just dealing with that kind of stuff. But honestly, I, I think just our, our overall like team mindset, like as we were going into it, was the right one. You know, we were focused. You know, we we got our work and we didn't allow it to be a distraction. You know, so it, it wasn't as bad, nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. One thing I want to ask about, because I saw on the uh, Instagram, the workout with Antonio Brown. How was that, and how did that come about as well? Uh, well, yeah, uh, I was working out in North Carolina um, this off season, but, you know, my gym closed down and stuff. So, you know, obviously me and A.B. were teammates over with the Raiders, so we became acquainted. And um, I knew he, I know he owns a gym, you know, down here, and I hit him up. But he told me to come through and kind of come get this work in. Um, so I slid down here and I've just work, been working out with him since I've, since I've been down to Fort Lauderdale during this like, quarantine in the past, what, month and a half or whatever it's been. And I guess um, the final question I have is um, one of the things I always like to see a few weeks after the draft is we see these NFL rookies start to spend their first NFL paycheck. So after signing with the Raiders and getting your first paycheck, was there anything big or special purchases you made? <laughs> yeah, actually, um, my junior year of college, after that season, I told myself that if I got to the league and, and, and you know, got some money, that the first thing that I was going to buy was a, a pair of Balenciaga shoes. Um, so I did I did end up buying those black, those black Balenciagas. <laughs> Damn, you, can, you can't go wrong with the first purchase there. Cannot. <laughs> Word. All right, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, Jason. I really appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely, I appreciate you having me on.